10 6. Maddox in the dugout. His Repco stands in and he takes a fastball up high. Repco takes a strike. Maddox doing a real good Vinny Choke imitation of that. Yeah, he, he's like Vinny Choke for a long time, and, he, and he's copied the movements of Vinny Choke. He's got him down. There's a bunt, and it rolls foul. Garcia Pyre to follow. And that's hammered to left. Linden back. Linden looking up. And he makes the catch. Linden did a couple of 360s and he put it away. Uh, how the winds can change here at AT&T. This is the Emerald Gym of the game. And why not? We thought off the crack of the bat it was going to be out of here. And. As Kai pointed out, he looked left, he looked right, did a spin, and squared up and caught it right in front of the wall. And we are going to make it our Emerald Gem of the game. That's our Emerald Snacks Gem. Which is high to Garcia Parr. Couple of hits for the Dodger first baseman. In tight, two balls in no strike. Up the middle. Durham leaps. He's got it. She's starting to look like a Kirk Reader night, I'm telling you. It is. Giants fans, be sure to drop in your local Osh store to enter to win a chance to meet Hall of Famer Willie Mays as part of the day you met Willie Mays promotion. Step one, Osh. Here's J.D. Drew. Drew is one for three. Back to our breaking ball. And a pearl. Great location there. On deck is Lugo. And now it's one and two. A nice tight little cutter right there. And it, it's a real late break, late movement on it. I mean, he places that thing on the inside corner at the belt to a lefty. That's a tough pitch. Got him. <laughs> Moises Salou is going to lead things off. The crowd's back in it. It's 10 6. And we'll be back. Giants baseball is brought to you by the new KFC Famous Bowls, homestyle mashed potatoes later with sweet corn, all white meat, crispy chicken, signature gravy, and a three cheese blend. Five delicious layers, five delicious flavors, only at KFC. Greg Maddox set now to face. Four. This is a loo first pitch swinging again hit a bullet white right to bed of meat and one pitch one out and that's how the bottom of the sixth starts off for the Giants with one out that'll bring up Shea Hillenbrand Hillenbrand on the night 0 for 2 struck out in the second and popped out in the fourth young Giants fan hi dad first Giants game well welcome Hillenbrand with one out takes a strike at the knees. One's off the plate. One ball and one strike. Mm -hmm. 
Ellen Van trying to get aboard for Feliz. Ellen Brand's been hot. Cop to third, but foul. With a long home run last night into left center field. Behind in the count. One and two. That's off the plate. Damage has been done with Vizquel, Durham, Linden, and Alou. Following that, it's been very quiet from Hillenbrand, Feliz, Alfonso. Maddox has had his way with those three. Hillenbrand, kind of a, an emergency, get out of my kitchen pack, stays alive. Well described, partner. Well described. You could have exaggerated the get out of my kitchen just a little bit. Slowly hit. Beta meat. Got him. That was a good play. Well, right now, let's take a look at what's on tap. Brought to you by Corona. And uh, the Giants are going to have Matt Morris taking on Derek Lowe tomorrow. That's a, a game you'll see with the Toyota pregame show. Tune in tomorrow at 12:30, and then it's the Diamondbacks coming to town. And Levon Hernandez making his first start against the Giants as a Diamondback. He'll face Noah Lowry, and then uh, it'll be a Brandon Webb, Matt Cain that featured Tuesday start. Feliz pops it back and out of play. Tom Coe and Bimel. Feliz skies this one to left. Ethier will put it away. And Maddox comes back with a nice one, two, three inning. We'll go to the seventh, 10 6 LA. August 21st for 20 bucks. You get a view reserve Irish section seat. Special ticket can only be purchased at 415 972 2298. Also, a special ticket required for the collectible Shamrock Giants cap. All right, let's check in with Kim. Do I look at you then? Hi there. I'm here with the Reader family. Here's Carla, and she's with her daughters, Hallie and Hope. And we just want to know, coming back for the special night tonight for your husband, just how do you feel about all that? It's so exciting. I mean, the Giants have been a family to us over the years. And for us to come back, it's so emotional, but it's overwhelming, but we love it. I mean, we love it in San Francisco. So, how is it having your husband home more? Oh, I think he wants to go back and play baseball. <laughs> but uh, no, he's. He loves it. He is a help, and the the girls love having him around. Hope uh, missed him a lot during the first years of her life. Obviously, he was on the road a lot, but oh, it's great. I mean, he does all the fun stuff now with us, and it's just great. It's he's been home a year, and it's flown by. So, righty, he's sitting next to you. As it, he's a hey Woody. <laughs> I just want to ask him one question. Is it weird for you to be in the stands? Uh, it is a little bit. I've been in here one other time in June we came back, so uh, I was able to sit up here, but it's a lot different than being in the dugout. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, guys. All right. The Reader family, and a terrific family it is. In the meantime, Lugo singles, Ethier gets his fourth hit. It really is a funny feeling when you go through uh, your first summer after you retire from the game because uh, as, as Kirk Re Reader mentioned he hasn't had a summer off for 16 years. Now all of a sudden you find yourself at home and it, it, it blows your mind. The things you forget about summer. Nice play by Alfonso. The other thing is. It may only happen a couple of times a week but you find yourself thinking. 
I need to be somewhere, don't I? Isn't the, <laughs> isn't the bus leaving soon? There's a future broadcast. That's his Kirk Reader's young daughter, Hallie. Okay, Hallie. Youngest of the two. There you see Hope, his older daughter. Yeah, Hope had Gonna help now. out. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Just like an older daughter. <laughs> One and oh to Wilson Bateme. Two and oh. Alfonso knocks another one down. I mean, that happened to me all the time. It was like, the bus is leaving when? Oh, I'm not playing anymore. Yeah, it's kind of bad, too, because, uh, you know, you have that, that gnawing feeling that something's, you're supposed to be someplace. And in baseball, I mean, you just do not want to be late. There's. Flip to left, but Linden's going to come in. He will make the catch. His throw is a strong one, and it hits Lugo in the back. But it ends up being a sacrifice fly. So nice at bat for Betamit and a nice play by Linden. Well, Lugo has excellent speed. He doesn't really give an outfield of a whole lot of chance. But uh, a nice effort, nonetheless, from Todd Linden. He's a pretty physical baseball player. He can do a lot of things. Here's Russell Martin, who's 0 for 2. And he chops it foul. Klein in the bullpen. You know, but to get back to that, that feeling of anxiety you have the first year you retire, I mean, in, in, in baseball, it, the first thing you learn being a professional is you do not ever be late. There is no excuse. There is no acceptance. There is no tolerance. If you're 10 minutes early, you're 5 minutes late. That's just the way it is. Here's the 0 1 to Russell Martin. And I've had roommates that missed a couple of buses, gone, got released. And uh, so it, it becomes an intimidation that you, you live with your whole professional career. I mean, it's a good one. You became responsible, obviously. But that does not go away when you retire as a baseball player. Foul, out of play. Well, what happens then when you get into the normal life? And I don't know, and I do know what it's like with you. If you take a family vacation, you're at the airport three hours too early. <laughs> and your wife and kids are looking at you like, what in the heck are we doing? Yeah, but I'm happy. But this is how I was taught. I don't know how many times. Jennifer's asked you, but Michelle has asked me, well, what time are we leaving for the airport? And it's like four hours before the plane leaves, and they look at you like, no, we're not. Oh, man. It's true. We're there 40 minutes before the movie starts. There you see the number on Jamie Wright's evening, five and a third, seven hits allowed. Chopper to Vizquel, and it's a double play. A run for the Dodgers. It's the middle of the seventh. Seventh inning stretch time, and it's brought to you by Jack Daniels. Oh, yeah. Goal number seven. Fred Tomko is the new pitcher for the Dodgers. Tomko making his 11th appearance out of the bullpen. He had made. 10 starts for the Dodgers. 8 6 record, 4.68 or 6 6 ERA. Tomko, fastball, curveball, slider, changeup, split. I mean, he can do a lot of things with the baseball. He said, You'll probably see me throw sliders more than anything when I come in out of the bullpen. He says, But I really have the confidence to throw all of my pitches. He says, It has been a uh, a unique experience, one that I thought about for a long time, but when I was finally challenged by Grady Little, I thought, you know, why not? He had two and a half weeks to think about this because they asked him prior to him going on the disabled list. And when he came off the disabled list, he went right into, the, right into the manager's office and said, I'm your boy. You want me to, to be in that bullpen and work up to someday possibly being a cl closer? I'm your guy. So he has become Grady Little's project. 
And Giants fans remember that uh, Tomko's got that good country hard fastball that he'll go 93 to 98 miles an hour consistently. And he always seems to come in with some pretty good stuff. And throwing strikes has never been a problem for him. Vinny Chulk in the Giants bullpen. Finley's on deck. Finley's numbers against Tomko very good. Because that's low, and now it's three and one. So just a matter for the Giants get some base runners and uh, hope you can get a blast mix into some some singles. There's a blast to center. Repco spins around. Gone. Eleven seven. Double digits now in home runs for Eliezer Alfonso. Well, count leverage is critical, and there's a 3-1 challenge there. Topka knows with a, a lead, he cannot start walking people, and he puts the pressure on Alfonso, and here's the result. Home run number 10. Here's Finley. Finley last night hit a home run. And for Finley, that was his sixth of the year. And here he looks at a strike to even the count. Saw the smile from Alfonso, the Giants dugout. And there's not a more popular member on that Giants team. Everybody has embraced the rook, the story that he's brought into this clubhouse. Finley pops it up. And for call puts it away. That's out number one here in the seven. And here's Randy Wynn. He has provided a lot of energy. He put as much time in the minor leagues as this guy had has put in and then finally get your chance at the big league level and then do what he has done. And it's been remarkable and you can see rookie catcher home runs. Alfonso third on the San Francisco all time list. Here's Randy Wynn. Randy Wynn looking for his first hit. He's 0 for 3. And a couple of quick strikes, and it's nothing and two. Randy Wynn did not like that last call. A little pop up that's going to chase Lugo back a couple of steps. Really didn't like the last call, and there's any doubt you don't like the call, you're going to look away. Well, you have to. You got to get out there. You got to cover it. That last ball was off the plate. It wasn't across the plate. So because it's called a strike, now you got to get after it. When you do that, you expose yourself inside. And Tomka, who's always been able to throw to both sides of the play pretty consistently, took advantage of it. He knew that Wynn was leaning, and he jammed him. There's a bullet foul. So we keep an eye on Kenny Lofton and Omar Vizquel tonight. It is our professional grade brought to you by GMC Trucks. And Lofton tonight, two for three. Vizquel, one for three. They're staying hot. Home run off the bat of Eliezer Alfonso, the second of the night for the Giants. And Vizquel lifts one high and foul. The San Francisco Bells about ready to enter into the cove with a head of steam. And Vizquel out on strikes to end the inning. So Tomko gets the strikeout, but he gives up the home run to Eliezer Alfonso. It's bye bye, baby. It's 11 7. We'll be back. 
11 7 Dodgers Almedo signs will lead things off. Signs is hitting in the ninth slot. And he looks at a pitch low and away. Vinny choked 14 times. He's come in and taken the ball from Felipe Alou. Record 0 and 1. That loss came last Sunday against these Dodgers. A walk off home run to Russell Martin. He has been outstanding. 15 strikeouts against four walks. Here's a strike. One and two. Good hard slider. One thing about Choke, I mean, he'll throw that slider with as much confidence as he'll throw the fastball. And he's got excellent command with everything. Occasional change up he'll throw in there just to stay in shape, but for the most part, you're going to see fastball slider. One and two. And that time, Almedo signs took the slider two and two. The bell is turning around, I think. Actually, maybe the horn blower. Two balls, two strikes. Three and two. He's taking his time. It's the horn blower. Three and two. Got him. Good slaughter. Time now for our Chevron top tier player. We go back to April 19th at 2003. And Barry Bonds hit a walk off homer off of Ray King. And Barry, who has hit 10 career walk offs. This was number eight in his career, and it was the first hit he'd ever had, had off Ray King. And he did that on this date, August, or April 9th, or August 19th, 2003. It's, it was in August on this date. If not, we are starting the season all over again, big <laughs> boy. I just read him. This is for call. And the ball. One ball and no strikes for call. He scored a couple of runs. Repco to follow. On the ground. Durham on the dive and a base hit. Feels a little quicker than usual. Well, it has been denied, and that's not a good thing when you have a lot of sinker ballers going out there. Hennessy, Wright, Maddox, all sinker ball pitchers, and we have seen a lot of these just out of the reach of the infielders. Here's Repco. Repco hit one well to left that on contact it looked like it may be gone, but it was Linden who made a nice catch in front of the wall in left field. Eleven seven. Choked on it. Good job of trying to keep for call close. Now I didn't think that was going to be an issue when the Giants were down 10 nothing in the third inning. I don't think they'd be worried about holding runners on close in the eighth inning. But the Giants have battled back. That 
one in the dirt. Dug out nicely. That was not an easy pick from Shea Hillenbrand. I mean, that was a high one hopper, and Vinny Choke really was thinking pickoff here. He unloaded. And if that gets by Hillenbrand, for call standing on third easily. Foul. Klein. Very good over his last six games. One and two to Repco. Not close. Two and two. Remember tomorrow, right here on FSN Bay Area. Jonathan Broxton get loose for the Dodgers. First pitch at. 105 will be on the air at 12:30. Left field, trouble for Linden. Linden needs to get to it quickly to keep for call from scoring. He does a good job on the carom, and Repco's got a double. So now it's Garcia Para with first base open. And Drew on deck. Maybe we'll see some strategy here from the Giants. But well, one thing they know about Garcia Parr is he likes to swing the bat. He's a first ball, fastball hitter, first ball hitter, period. And with runners in score position, he'll even expand his zone a little bit farther. So with an open first base here, they're not going to mess with him. He is average on the first pitch, as good as you can get. So Drew will hit. And Klein's coming in. So we're going to take a break. We're at AT&T Park. It's 11 to 7. And Klein's the new Giants pitcher. Heritage Week at AT&T Park. And on the 27th, it's Mexican Heritage Day. You need a special ticket. It's 25 bucks. And you can purchase it by calling 415-972-2298. Now, it sounds like I'm repeating myself, but you also need a special ticket to receive the giant sombrero. So the bottom line is, is have a fistful of tickets. I'm in. Blind to face Drew. Going away, one ball and no strikes. Steve Klein, 54th time he's taken the ball, three and three, three eight three ERA, and he's a sinker baller, and that's what the Giants are looking for right now. They're looking for a ground ball to get out of this inning. Hillenbrand off his glove and down the right field line. Two runs are going to score. Durham's throw to third is offline, so Drew comes through with a hit. So that'll knock in a pair of runs and that'll put a dent in Vinny Choke. Did not have a lot of time. Ellen Brand just gets a little bit of glove on it. Some of the faithful now are headed out. Here's, here's Lugo. Lugo came in for Kent. Grounded out in the fourth, singled in the seventh. And he pops this one fouling out of play. Stay tuned after the game for the stub up post game wrap.
So Lugo can drive in a run by making an out, one ball and one strike. Outside, two balls and one strike. Hey, one thing Lugo has done since the last time we saw him in the National League when he was with the Astros, I mean, he's he's changed his style. I mean, he is no longer a guy who's pull happy, who's trying to hit the ball long. Hits this ball fairly long. Randy Wynn is going to run it down, and it's going to be a sacrifice fly. It's 14 to 7. He did this the other day in Los Angeles in an 0-2 count. It was a big at bat. In a, in a close ball game, as all the games down in Los Angeles were one run games. And one of the best at bats that we saw was an 0 2 at bat that he hit a sack fly to right field, right center field to score a run. And this bat, like that bat, at bat, were good at bats. Here's Ethier, who's had a perfect night. He's four for four. And he drives this one to right. Fair foul. Foul. All right, let's listen to it. When it makes that sound, it's foul. <laughs> well, that's the story we're going with. <laughs> I just wonder what to say about that. <laughs> what a pick me up, Parts. Yeah, the kayak was very quick to the ball. Ethier pops this one up. And that ends the inning. That'll do it. Three runs, 14 7 LA. Welcome back. We're in the bottom of the eighth. The Giants are looking to make up seven runs. They're down. It's 14 to 7. Tomorrow is strikeout cancer day. What and it's sold out, but you can watch it right here on Fox Sports Net. What that means though is this season for every strikeout that a Giants pitcher throws, Genentech Foundation will donate $200 to the Wellness Foundation. That's an organization that helps out families that have been stricken by cancer. You can always donate to help fight cancer. You can log on to strikeoutcancer.com. Guys. All right. Good information. Thanks, Kim. Jonathan Braxton is the new Braxton is the new pitcher facing Ray Durham. You see the numbers 68 strikeouts and 55 and a third against 22 strike uh, 22 walks. He's got strikeout stuff obviously throws hard mid 90s and above. Dodgers got Braxton from the San Diego Chargers. Now he's a big fella. Offensive lineman. This guy is huge. He's big like Texas. They're out of play. It's one and two. He's 6'3, 290. So, yeah, you could throw a few pads on that body and he could uh, definitely play the line position. 22 years old, I mean, he ain't going to get any smaller. But he throws hard. He throws like a guy 6'3, 290, supposed to throw. Got a split finger fastball. Durham on the ground. Garcia Pyre will take it himself. Durham dove for a ball last inning and he came up not looking 100%, and he's trotting off the mound right now like. He's feeling it a little bit. Well, every at bat right now for Todd Linden is a big at bat. Not necessarily in this game, but just. To show some people that he is ready to play at this level as he lines one to right. We saw when Ray Durham was running down to first. And so it may just be tired legs, but a little bit of a, a limp going. 
And here's the dive you're talking about. He got up from that dive. There's a little grimace there. And this is the time of, of the season when, you know, you really are starting to feel a little heaviness in your arm if you're a pitcher, in your legs if you're an everyday player. And you say, well, gee, why isn't it in September? Why is it more so in August? Well, in September, you get to expand your roster. You get to bring more people into the clubhouse. And, uh, you know, there are going to be games where you can give your regulars a little rest. Your team's up by nine or you're down by nine. Plus, in September, you start to sniff the barn a little bit. Start to sniff where you're going to be in October. Either in the playoffs or back at home. It definitely will add a little bounce to your step. All went to Alou hit a three run home run in the fourth. Well, it was a 10 1 ball game prior to this swing of the bat. And the Giants faithful here at ATT looking for. A, Something to get excited about, and it was Moises who did it on a first pitch off of Greg Maddox. Down low. This guy really has been a. A nice story for the Dodgers this year. I mean, he has really fulfilled the need. But you start thinking about some of the hits that this bullpen took with Gagne going down again to injury, Danny Spaez not really panning out, meeting their expectations. Nancy Brazabon was injured. He went down on the disabled list, and all of a sudden, this guy comes out of their minor league system and says, Hey, give me the ball. I can do the job. And he has certainly done that. His story, along with Takashi Saito's story, their closer. I mean, it has really been the difference in this Dodger club. No. Alou in a battle right now with one out. Two and two. All right. This is one they wanted. Very close right there at the knees just a little bit outside the outside corner. Nice reception though. Russell Martin can catch folks. He is solid back there. Alou skies this one to right. Drew now racing him will make the catch. And here's Hillenbrand who's hitless in three trips. Remember tomorrow final game of the series and it will be a game that will determine who wins the series. Down low to Shea Hillenbrand sound like I've given up. I didn't mean to sound like that. Put it this way. A lot of things can happen in this game. There you go. Oh, yeah. That horse laugh has got to go. Yeah, he's too happy. Hillenbrand lifts it to left field. Ethier is over. And Ethier catching, and that ends the inning. Ninth inning coming up. A lot of things can happen. Here's Klein to beta meet. Sights and sounds of a game that got out of hand early. Giants crawl back. It's now 14 7 Dodgers in the ninth. As Klein throws to Beta Meet, and it's now one ball and one strike. We do have some changes for you. We'll give you those here in a second. It'll be Beta Meet, Martin, and then Jonathan Broxton. On the ground foul one and two.
Klein. Got the last two outs of the eighth inning. And that one two pitches in the dirt. All right here's some of your changes. Sweeney is now in left. Linden moves from left to right. Moises Alou is out of the game. And uh, one more change. After this 2 2 pitch to Batemi. Foul back. And the kid just called up. Tomas De La Rosa is at short. And out of the game is Omar Vizquel. Long time minor leaguer. De La Rosa played for Felipe Alou a couple of different times in Montreal. Two balls, two strikes. Got him. Well, once again, it's time for Eliminate Me, brought to you by Insurance Online Auto Insurance. And it's my birthday. Eliminate Me. All right. Not a problem. And, oh, by the way, me, happy birthday. El Teco, El Heiko. Here's Russell Martin. On the ground up the middle. Work for De La Rosa. Well, two out. It's got to feel pretty good. Yeah, get a get one that get you into the flow. <laughs> Former Giant Ramon Martinez is going to pinch it. He was on the field for the Kirk Reader ceremony along with Jeff Kent, Kenny Lofton, Brett Tomko, Billy Miller. Down low to Martinez. Played a lot when Jeff Kent went on the disabled list. Here's Saito in the bullpen. Two balls and no strikes. Pops it up. Center field for Randy Wynn. And that'll do it. Giants are coming up in the bottom of the ninth inning. And it's 14 7. Only at McDonald's. By the 2006 Toyota RAV4, with 40% more cargo space and an available V6 engine. Not just bigger, better. Toyota moving forward. By Rico, move your ideas forward with Rico dependability. And by Comcast digital cable with on demand. Tune into Channel One, pick a show, play it whenever. Rally Pumpkin is out. It's 14 to seven. Easy jingles. Don't get caught in that chair, jingles. Here's Takashi Saito. Saito, the closer for the Dodgers, looking to get some work. Belize on the first pitch skies it to fairly deep center field. And on one pitch, Belize is gone. Well, if Eliezer Alfonso stepping in the batter's box, time now for our drive of the game brought to you by Toyota. It happened back in the seventh inning leading off against Brett Tomko. He took a fastball, a 3 1 count right over the wall. And the significance of that is he became just the third rookie catcher in San Francisco Giants history. To hit the double digits in home runs. That was number 10 on the year, and that's our Toyota drive of the game. And he's taken all the way, and he looks at a strike. Klein is due to hit next, but it's going to be Todd Green instead. A little pop up, maybe playable for Garcia Parra. And it's out of play. Rally hats, rally pumpkins. Yeah, they're the rally hats. They're having fun Bunch Saturday night. Rally things going on. There's the rally pumpkin jingles. Giants bus driver down in Los Angeles made it up for the series, said he would not miss it. And he definitely brought some good attitude with him, as he always does. He is the rally pumpkin.
I'm speechless. One ball and two strikes. Out of play. Somebody out there is thinking the Giants are leaving their major league teams. They're, they're leaving their major league team in the hands of the rally pumpkin on the road. It's true. Alfonso retired. The capable hands of the rally pumpkin as he drives their bus <laughs> with great care and diligence. He's the rally pumpkin. Not real happy right now either. And it would take more than a loss to dampen the spirits of the rally pumpkin. Let me tell you. He may just spend the night and be ready for game three tomorrow. I'm not leaving. Here's Todd Green. Oh my goodness. We have lots of characters. In our careers as broadcasters, swing and a miss, nothing in two. Don't even want to start to mention all of them, but we have another one. Oh, and two. Saito heating it up, 97 on the gun. Maybe a little hot. Green taking two and two. That slider's his best strikeout pitch. It's a good one. And the thing about Saito that is so consistent is his command. On the ground, Beta Meat backs up, underhands it, and Garcia Parra leap steps on the bag, and the ball game is over. So the Dodgers come back and win game two and they did it with a strong first and second inning after two they led 10 nothing and the final 14 seven in favor of the Dodgers our stub up post game wrap coming up.